pray for the women who are being kidnapped and raped and murdered and tortured and terrorized in other countries and even our own country. I had this horrible dream and I was in, at first I thought it was America and it seemed as though I was visiting or on vacation or something because I was in a, a hotel and um, I went, I was with a bunch of people and, and I left them uh, and went to my room in this hotel and I was looking out the window and just, you know, the uh, hustle and bustle of this whatever city I was in. And then the next thing I know, I'm this, I decided to go out and just walk around the block and just sort of take in this little um, downtown area that I, I seem to be in. Long story short, I ended up on a tour bus and I'm riding through the town. I, I recall being uh, sort of on the back of the bus and the, I was sitting next to a window that was open and my hair was blowing and I'm just, you know, taking in the town. And um, at this point, I felt no fear or anything like that. And then um, the tour came to an end and I apparently got off the bus and the guy who was the bus driver, um, the scene changed and he was in a limousine. He was a driver of a limousine and we were talking. I don't know about what. And somehow I ended up in this room with this guy. And then I discovered that I was a prisoner. And I recognized that I was probably going to be used for prostitution. And I tried to get out of this uh, place where this guy had me. And it was really a weird thing. I opened up the door and he was standing... It, it looked like it was a shower and there was another guy that had his shirt on and like a cowboy hat and all I saw was the steam but this guy was naked and 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 I opened the door and here's all the steam and everything and but when I opened the door I thought I was going to be able to get out and I walk I opened the door and saw this and so somehow I don't know how, but somehow I got out of there and I was trying to get out of the building and the building was set up like a maze. And um, I'm, I'm trying to escape and it was just like I was in the hood, but it was, I just don't think it was America, but it might've been, but the way this, place was set up it was set up like a maze like it was in case someone did try to escape they couldn't get out and and then I started seeing all these people um you know like black guys and 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 white and black ladies and they were you know dressed you know like maybe like a prostitute might dress or something like that. And the guys were just sort of hanging around like, you know, they might've been shooting dice or you know, on the corner dealing drugs or something like that, you know, but they didn't, they didn't look American. You know, I just, it's just weird to explain that. And so anyway, I, I'm going through all these obstacles and, I, I don't see myself actually fighting, but some kind of way I'm getting through all these obstacles. And then I I managed to get out of this building and I take off running and I have no clothes on. I take off running. I'm trying to get, get to safety. 
then it's when I realized I wasn't in America. I, you know, well, no, it was like, it seemed like it was a place that I, I had been before, but I think it, it used to be like a casino or a restaurant or something, but I, I just felt like if I could get there, I would be safe you know, would be away from this, this environment that was trying to entrap me. So there was this woman who caught up to me and she was trying to stop me. And, you know, and I didn't see myself fighting her, but I knew it was sort of like this, you know, karate kind of thing going on and I'm get, you know, and then I would just start running and then it came down to whoever could get to this building first. Uh, you know, you know, I'm thinking in my mind, I would be safe, but come to find out I got to the building first, but come to find out it was, it was just like another pimp's stable. And, and that's what I thought I had escaped from. And I didn't realize it, you know, until I got to this other place and, you know, they just kind of, you know, I, I go in and I, I realize it's kind of like a hotel and I, I, you know, nobody is really shocked that I'm naked and I, I'm trying to find somebody that I can talk to or, or, or you know, get help from. <clears throat> and so they sort of take me, somebody takes me, you know, I'm making me feel like I, I'm okay now. You, you'll be okay now, you know, and they take me to this room. And I tell you, it was the worst thing. And then that's when I knew I was in another country. And I don't know what country. But they threw me in this room. And this room had at least four beds in it. And none of the beds were made up. And it was only two other women in this room. And, and it had this smell and it it kind of smelled like sex but then it had like this sickly sweetie kind of smell it was terrible and 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 th there was one lady who was just laying on her back like her knee was bent over the side of the bed her foot was on the floor and the rest of her was just laying flat on the bed and she was partially clothed. And then there was this other lady who had the covers over her and then she pulled the covers down to her waist and she had like this black lingerie thing. These two ladies were black ladies, but they, I don't, I didn't, at first I'm like, I'm thinking, why, why won't you do something to try to escape? They just at first, I, I really had to think about this dream to really figure out the posture that these women were taking. Because uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, you should be getting up trying to get out of here, you know. And then I realized after about a day or so, and I'm thinking and I'm praying about this dream, and I realized that, these these women probably had been so violated that they were like in shock. And then I realized I, I saw the one lady who was partially clothed and partially naked laying on the bed. And it was just like she her body was there, she was still alive, but nobody was in the building. And the girl that had the black lingerie on, after I, I realized that she was just kind of like in shock too. The, the covers were stripped off of her. And please, if you've got kids, you don't want them to hear anything graphic or, you know, terrible. This is the time to take to, to not let them listen from this point on. But I'm going to say it because we need to pray. But it was like the covers were ripped off of her. And I could see all this ejaculation coming out of her 
private area. It, but it was so much, it was just kind of bubbling out and she, in addition to her bleeding. And then she slid out of the bed to get up and run to a different room. And you could see that there had been old blood there, plus her blood. So it was just nasty. So either either she was forced there and 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 but I afterwards I got the impression that it was a bed that other women had been on. And it was just it was just unbelievable. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And it took me a couple of days to to soak in what I had seen. I'm I'm literally there. I'm not thinking about it being there. I mean, I am literally there. And then after a certain amount of time, some guy came back to the bedroom where uh they had put me in with the two girls and um, told me to come with him. And so he took me into another room. And in this room, it was like a bunch of guys and they were all sitting around the walls. And at first, I mean, I didn't recognize anybody or anything like that. But the one thing that I began to notice that was kind of strange is that nobody touched me. Nobody made any kind of advance or anything towards me. Uh, but I'm just being led around in this building or this hotel, the second hotel. And so then all of a sudden, these guys started speaking in some language. And then um, some guy who I guess was the head of this house or this hotel uh, said something to the effect of, uh, you never know when a Israelite will show up or something. And then that's when I noticed the black guy who was the uh, tour bus driver and the limousine driver that had abducted me initially was there. And apparently some of his guys were also there. And so it became clear that he came to to uh recover his quote unquote property so the next thing i know is he's leading me out of this building and then i woke up that's when i woke up and i was like oh my god and i have never ever had a dream like this where i was you know, this was different. It, it was, I have, I've had dreams before where I was there, wherever there is, I, wherever that place was. But this was a situation where it was like affecting me. It was like, it was like God was allowing it to happen to me so I could get a feel of what was happening to these ladies. And so that's the reason why I just ask you to please, please, please pray. Please include uh, our sisters and brothers in all over the world who are being tortured and kidnapped and beheaded and raped and sodomized and and their kids the little babies are being killed and beheaded it's a horror what i saw and even researching to to get uh something that's halfway appropriate to show you as a picture uh to go with this it, it was horrible it was horrible Please pray. Hi, this is Miss Preacher. Thanks for watching my video. I'd also like to tell you about John 3.16 that talks about 
God loving the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You are in this world and he is concerned about you. God loves you. Do you know that in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, the word says that if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it all boils down to what's in your heart. That's what salvation is about. Inviting Jesus into your heart because you believe. And once you've invited Jesus into your heart, you pray to him, you seek him for guidance and protection, and he'll be there to help you. There's so many wonderful things about being saved. I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm talking about inviting Jesus into your heart and developing a personal relationship with him. Please consider inviting Jesus into your heart today. We want to make sure your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for listening and have a great day.